Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Baramos, midway boss of Dragon Quest 3. I think he's generally considered to be like the easiest by pretty much everyone. But yeah, I've leveled him up a little bit, so this isn't going to be a perfectly fair test. But I don't think we're going to have too much problem with him. Here we go. Oh, a bit early. So I think he's level 35 at the moment. Yeah, he poses very little threat. I mean, we can just do silly normal strats even at this level. Without really thinking too much, because yeah, the only danger he poses is when he does a critical attack. But other than that, he's just a real push like to be honest. We could probably have a go at level 99 at these levels and stats. So, force and attack up. Yeah, 150. His attack is very low. And that's all he's done that turn. Even when he attacks three times per turn, he's not much to worry about. Uh, let's have John defend. I mean, we can probably have him attack and get away with it, but... There we go, max attack. If he doesn't do anything to... No, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, we're barely taking any damage. We can probably get him on the next turn. I mean, we might as well just have everyone use Falcon Slash. But this is why you have priests with swords. 500 is not bad, to be honest. I mean, they're not even attackers. They're just healers. It's a shame we can't get them all, all four attacks in a row to get the multiplier. But... I don't know how he's blocked out when it was surrounded him, but there you go, Dragon Quest logic. There we go, nice and simple. We'll spam him again because that was far too easy. There you go. So I had a theory that this is going to be much better if you accepted the XP and didn't use it to level them up. It would be much better training the Metal King slimes. So it'd just be much more consistent. Oh, if you had a map at level 1. Right, I mean, we barely even need to heal. Let's go for it anyway. Frost Force and Gritty Dirty. I want to see him use a critical hit to see if he actually puts us in any kind of trouble. There you go, that's a bit annoying. Oh, critical. He's doing well. Unfortunately, he's given Jade a coup de grace, so he's pretty much screwed. Um, right, yeah, we'll... What we do? Yeah, we'll full heal this turn, and then force the next turn. I not how much damage Kaboomal does. He's not unlocked it yet. I imagine he'll do a fair bit. Right, all out attack. He dies this turn. There we go, killing shot, bam, 5,000 damage. It's probably the most we've ever done pretty comfortably, to be honest. And there we go, let's just give him the XP, get him up to, was he 37 now? Yeah, I don't know what next level is, he unlocks something, but yeah, very straightforward. There is Murdor, who I believe is the final boss Dragon Quest 4, or is it 6? I think it might be 6, I think he might be the midway boss in Dragon Quest 6, because then Mortem is the final, and then Nocturnus is the post-game boss. But yeah, I believe he's generally considered the second weakest after Baramos. He's a lot more annoying. And I do love his soundtrack. It's sort of got the air of just mental. <laughs> yeah, he's annoying because he uses Dazzle Flash, so he dazzles your attackers. But I've got myself equipped with a Catholican Ring and Jade with a Sober Ring. So we should resist it. Or should have a decent, high, decently high chance of resisting it anyway. See what he does. So he's level 17. So there you go. He's immediately doing much better than Baron was. He's our defense the lowered. So Edward is the only one who resisted though. Yeah, damage is good though. His defense isn't very high at all. It's a 
just have John attack. Fuck it. Yeah. He's too weak to really do oppose much threat. So we might as well. Yes, yeah, this bit of the track. I love those noises. <laughs> He's actually managed to get a kill in. Well done, Murdor. <laughs> He'll die next turn, but still, fair play to him. I love his attack sounds. I don't know why. I'm not going to waste any Yggdrasil leaves yet. We'll save them for the higher end bosses. Ah, bastard. A lot of the orchestral versions of these tracks have this little dark bit in the middle. Of course this one does, not Turnus this one does. There we go. And he's gone. Lovely, let's spam him one more time just for fun. So it's just like properly creepy bit in the track. It sort of it maintains the same sort of element of chaos as the first part and this bit does. It's just, just that little creepy bit in the middle. I do love it. Right, round two. I think he is like even though he's the second weakest, he is quite a lot harder than Baramos. So Baramos is very much the kind of entry level get used to this kind of vibe. Alright, same strats again. We don't really need to do anything clever to beat him. Okay, it was just Edward that got hit by that Dazzle Flash. So the rings we've got do resist it quite a lot then. Of the 18 kills of him I've done so far, we have generally almost always avoided that attack, which is pretty good. So that's the only reason you wouldn't want to grind Murdle. And that. Ah, <laughs> uh, this... Disrupting Wave will forever be the most annoying thing a Dragon Boss, Dragon Quest boss can do. Is it in every game? It's definitely in 8, because it's annoying in there. Definitely in 11. It probably is, isn't it? Don't even remember Dragon Quest 7, because it's a load of rubbish. I think it'll probably die this turn, will it? Oh, finish on a crit. Beautiful. There you go, there's Murdor, second Murdor, second weakest of the bunch. Right, next up is Saro, who is supposedly regarded as the third easiest, but he caused me a hell of a lot of trouble while I was grinding him up to uh, level 24 before we got the Nimzo map. So I don't know if he just is more naturally more difficult or more annoying at the lower levels and he becomes like relatively straightforward at the higher ones, but I don't know. He is, yeah, he caused us a hell of a lot of trouble to be fair, but he is the... I think he is the main boss in Dragon Quest IV, if I remember correctly. And I think he's a former human as well. I don't... <laughs> I've never really got involved with the story of four. Yeah, weak to the same force again. I think it's, it was his critical hits that was causing the trouble last time. I can't really remember. Let's see what he can do. He buffs himself as well, which is quite annoying. There's his crit. It's a one-hit kill. Straight away. We're in trouble already. Oh, lovely dodge. Those boots coming in handy. Right, got some damage on the board though, so let's try and do Zing with the fast healer and then Nolt heal with the slow. Right, Zing goes first, it's lovely. And it's worked. Right, we should be fine. Okay, that'll do. Oh, and lovely coup de grace from Jade as well. Then we get the heal in. I might use an Omni heal here. I'll do a slow one. Actually, no, I'll do a full heal on Jade just to play it a bit safer. And, yes, great idea with Edward. Okay, that wasn't the safe we wanted. Uh oh. Like fuck. <laughs> right, that attack is definitely gonna hurt as well. There's a little um, graphical glitch I noticed last time I did Sorrow that you can see his mouth through his body. <laughs> Don't know why that's happened, what weird feature of Desmium that's <laughs> responsible for, but there you go. 
Right, this won't do that much because he's not buffed up. Right, tension boost. Go on, give me a hundred. I want this to look cool. Oh, yes. Alright, we kill him stylishly. Everyone defend, and Jade uses his. Uh, blind man's biff. That's the only way to do it. Defend, defend. Ah, oh, fuck's sake. That's the most annoying time to use that. Oh dear. So you've ruined it. Completely ruined it. Ah. Oh. Well, back to normal strats then. Oh dear. See, this is what caused the troubles, the whack and thwacks. Well, thwacks didn't do anything, but... <laughs> Why is it? This isn't meant to be that difficult. I don't know if someone... I mean, the list I've kind of been looking at to, for, like, for the relative difficulties of the bosses is just made by one guy. So I suppose it is subjective. But we've had a lot more trouble with Sara than any of the others we've grinded up. We've only done four so far. Right. Zing and let's chuck in the Omni Hurl in. Extra safe. Oh dear. My heart every time he does that. Oh, that's fine. Lovely, and then Omni Hill gets us all back to four. Beautifully done. I don't want to see this guy level 99. I mean, maybe he's easier. Maybe the attacks he learns on the way there just make him more straightforward. But... No. Right, normal strats once again. Lovely, lost the turn. That won't do too much. Yeah, 130 off. There we go. Now we're getting there. I thought he was going down that turn. Alright, he's in rage for Jade. I might do a, a priestly whipping boy in that case. Just to defend some of the damage that Jade takes. And let's heal with Edward. Alright, that's a crit. That shouldn't kill him if he's defending. Never mind. <laughs> it sounded better than it <laughs> happened. Well, R.I.P. John, he died heroically. But he, Sorry should die this turn, I think. John saved the day. There you go. But yeah, that was rough. Like, he's... I don't know why he's so tough. But there you go. Hopefully he gets easier. Hopefully. There it is. I was looking all over the place for that one. I was going all trades heavy and one of the islands, but there we go. All right, Nimzo. Oh, blimey, he's big. <laughs> Forgot what he looked like, but there you go. I think he's the final boss Dragon Quest V, and I think he's the boss all the way through. Uh, actually, I've got it on my spreadsheet. I think he's five. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yes, Dragon Quest V. Blood of Legendary Hero, we spilled and lost forever. Will it now? At least he's level 1, unlike the others, so we should have no problems here. So yeah, he's generally regarded as the fourth easiest. And he is weak to Thunder Force. Thunder Force. Let's see what he can do. He's not going to last long, so we'll kill him a couple of times. Beaky block. Ah, uh, haywire spells. <laughs> They've done basically nothing. Why did John only take three damage from that? He must be wearing something that nullifies spells. I've got no idea what the um, armor he's wearing actually does. That's the one we got from the uh, quest that the from Corbsy Purvis. Let's just have him attack one up. 
Yeah, that must block spells for however much damage. <laughs> yeah, hey, work a boom, only doing 50 damage. Another one. He must always go haywire. <laughs> We're taking so little damage. Uh, there's his, okay, 200 damage from his normal attack at level 1. That's quite a fair bit. His attack must be decently high. He might actually need a heal. Edward's going to sack for that. Okay, that's a fair bit. Oh, easy's crit. <laughs> Lovely dodge. I suspect that would have killed her. I don't think he would have killed us on full health, though, with his crit. Well, not yet, anyway. Boom. There we go. Let's give him another run. See what he can do. Yeah, so it's maps like this where I reckon it'd be quite good to level up against. Because you can get his map from Sorrow. So just get another level 1 map. Keep it at level 1. And just keep getting the XP. That's I reckon that's faster than... The Metal King Slime grind. So I might do that to get to level 99. Right, round two. I need to go back and play some of these older Dragon Quest games. Like 6 especially, I've been wanting to play for ages and just never really been bothered. Because I've seen the cutscene where Nocturnus comes back and kills Mortimer. And it's sick. <laughs> Double hair worker for Still not doing very much. Okay, so he lowers defense. And he's gotten through on everyone. That's not going to do too much in this fight, but it might get annoying later on. But we've got a coup de grace, so we can alleviate that immediately. And again. I don't think he's learned Disruptive Wave yet, so at least he can't undo the positive buffs. Oof. Death by Healer. Big rip for Nimzo. There you go, there's Nimzo. Uh, legacy bus number four. Know exactly where this one is. There you go. Alright. Now this is Dormagus. Primary antagonist in Dragon Quest VIII up until the point where you realise he's only a mid-game boss. But I fucking love this guy. Oh hang on, I need my other album for this one. I need Dragon Quest VIII album. Yes. They added so much depth to his character in the 3DS remake. Like in the original uh, game, I think he's weak to Earth. In the original um, PS2 game, like you realise he's just a pawn and being controlled by Rapthorn. But you don't get that scene where you realise he's like trying to learn magic and Rylus is just a poor master. And him not being all that attentive to Dormagus encourages him to go and steal the scepter and begin the events of the whole game. And you kind of feel bad for him in the end. Whereas in the PS2 version, he just dies and that's it. You never hear from him again. Oh, and in the 3DS, they added um, all those bosses in Memoriam where all the old bosses come back. So, Dolmagus in Memoriam is one of the hardest bosses in that game as well. He's only regarded as the fifth toughest in Dragon Quest IX, legacy boss-wise. I think basically all of the mid-game bosses are relatively weak. All of the final bosses of the games are quite tough, and then there's like the post-game bosses like Estark and Nocturnus, which are just stupid tough. Oh, he's got the Scream as well. I don't think there's any way of defending against Scream. You just get stunned for a turn. Okay. His attack isn't as high as Nimzo's, but I think he does. If I remember him from 10 years ago, I think it's his, when he does the flurry of feathers. That attack does a hell of a lot of damage to everyone. There you go, there's him gone. We'll do a cheeky speed run. So he's probably quite good to um, level up against as well. Relatively straightforward boss, 60,000 XP. Sounds good to me. Right, 
Right, so round two. The only other thing I remember about him from Dragon Quest IX specifically is when he does Disruptive Wave, the sounds are in reverse. Because where that is normally like a... I'm not going to try and make the sounds in my head, but... As soon as he does it, he probably hasn't learned it yet, but you know what I mean. I think he dodges quite a lot as well, which is a bit annoying. It's this creepy bit at the end again. Fucking love it. I think on this track in particular, this bit is the build up to the Rapthorn track because they immediately follow it in the album, but still. Love that little dark bit. There we go. <laughs> I wanted to pause it right at the end. Didn't quite get the time right, but there you go. There's Don Magus, Legacy Boss in difficulty number five. Next, we have Orgademir. He does not look like what I remembered him looking like at all. I, in my head, he's more like dark green than that, but oh well. But yeah, he's the final boss of Dragon Quest VII, which I did play and did kill him once. But by the time you realise he's back again for a second time, I just gave up playing at that point. <laughs> I just thought, what a stupid game, and gave up. But here we go. Uh, what's he weak to? Let's have a look. He is weak to fire. Right, let's see what he can do. He looks completely different in my head. I don't know why I misremembered him. That's a cool animation, though. Ooh. Oh, okay. So he's got like a... Not a critical attack, but like a one that does more damage. I like that animation, to be fair. It's like a snake. He got the word demon in his name. If you, it's, there's an anagram of it in there somewhere. So in 7, he basically pretends to be God after you kill him the first time. I don't know if he inhabits the body of God or whatever, but... That is a cool animation. <laughs> I like that. These are fucking cool attacks. We're going to enjoy levelling this guy up. Yeah, in 7, he takes on the form of God. So I guess he's got God in his name. And then the letters of Demon in there as well. Yeah, interesting. Alright, it should go down next turn or turn after. He's constantly attacking as well. Has he done... Oh, he's done Hellfire as well. Might survive. I think he did 37. Thought he'd do more than that. Oh well. He's still alive. We've hit him with... He must have relatively high HP then. Because we've hit him with quite a lot now. Obviously, he's still only level 1. Priest is still going first both times, so he can't be that fast. Chilly breath. Okay, not very much damage at all yet. So he's normal basic to doing 200, though. There you go. So he must have quite a lot of health then, because all of the other legacy bosses at level 1 have gone down within 3 turns. Like, quite comfortably. But he's taken 4. Ooh, Estard shoes. Is Estard the main place in Dragon Quest 7? <laughs> I can't really remember. That's another bit that annoyed me. The like the best friend you have in that game, Kiefer, he just like not very far into the game, he just leaves you, and then you never see him again. <laughs> and that's just, he was like one of the best characters. And then you recruited people like Ruff, who was like half boy, half dog, and you just think, what a fucking stupid twist. At least Maribel was alright. And, um, I can't remember his name, Sir... Oh, you find a guy at the top of a tower in an egg, Sir something or other. Oh, he's got Scream as well. And Ash. Ash, I think, is like great-granddaughter of Kiefer, because Kiefer goes back in time and stays there. She was a cool character. Maybe I'll give that game another chance at some point, because maybe I'll be an unfair to it. But yeah, I did not enjoy it. It just got annoying at the end. I never actually completed it fully. I'm enjoying Orgademir in Dragon Quest 9. Right, enraged for me. 
out. There we go, we got him. Right, there you go, that was Legacy Boss number 6, Orgadena. Will these boots have evasion chance? Thank you, Orgadena. I'll take them. Don't look terrible either, they're just pretty much standard boots. We'll take them. Right, next we have possibly my favourite boss of all time. He is the big, bad Rapthorn. Final boss of Dragon Quest VIII. And his music is, I would say, it might be my favourite ever. I think Corvus is the other close one, I think. But let's drop it. Rapthorn. Oh, I need to go to my other album again. Yes. Right, he's the seventh. Um, in terms of difficulty, he's ranked number seven. Does that make sense? I'm trying to get it the right way around in my head. But he's the only one that never learns to attack three times per turn, Rapthorn, for whatever reason that is. He only ever attacks twice, even at level 99. All right, let's get the buffs up. Let's see what he can do. Even though he only attacks twice, he is still, like, seventh from bottom. Is that a crit? Okay, normal attack does. Ooh, okay. His attack is higher then. He should look bigger, to be honest. Like in Dragon Quest VIII, you're obviously flying around on Imperia, and he's like. He's much bigger than this relative to the size of the character. Fucking love this music. Love that animation as well. Ah, uh, here we go. He's laughing confidently. Is he the only legacy boss that does this? None of the others we've seen so far do. It's basically just the boss wasting a turn. Where they'll just laugh. Need a full heal on Jade. And then Edward can just attack. Defense is decent. Okay. I love this bit. I think the like the main bit of this soundtrack is basically just a darker remix of Heavenly Flight. Which is like well, as the name suggests, that's a really nice one. Right, he should die this turn, provided he doesn't do anything mad. 350 for a normal attack. Let's see how much this does. That does a fair bit as well. It did a lot more than it did with Nimzo. Right, it should go down here. If he doesn't, I'll be impressed. There we go. Alright, let's do a cheeky speed run. Yeah, so he lasted four turns as well. A lot of the other easier ones only last three. So we must have either high HP or high defense. I think when we do come to do this one at level 99, rat form, we will um, have to sit Jade and Jedward on the bench and get... <laughs> see if um, Yangus, Jessica and Angelo will come and help us. I, I use the save editor and make them look different. <laughs> That's going to be the only way we can do it. Right, round two. Life Force, Scree D. Nearly finished me in one turn there. At a high level, he definitely would have. The great day there. Oh. It's the spells are doing very little at this stage of their difficulty. I suppose they once they learn Kafrizzle and Kaboomal, then it will do a little bit more. But at the moment, very weak compared to their normal attacks. That ball on a stick that does a lot as well, I think. What disruptive wave already? I was really hoping we'd kill him there, but <laughs> I'm not going to replay the soundtrack again. Oh, we got to do him anticlimactically now. Right, I don't think we really need to heal. Just full out attack, he should die the next time we hit him. Fuck's sake. There we go, got him anyway. 
I think he must have the majority of his attacks already at level 1. He must learn relatively few new attacks compared to the other bosses. But there you go, there's number 7, final boss of Dragon Quest 8, Rapthorn. Right, next boss, number 8, final boss of Dragon Quest 6 is Mortimer. The most annoying by far <laughs> legacy boss because he's got his, um, he summons his hands as like separate enemies basically. So you have to kill uh, each of them in, as well as his head. I think one of them has Zing as well. Right, I'm intentionally going to play the wrong music for this one because he shares his track with uh, Nocturnus. So I'm just going to play the normal boss music and save. Uh, save Nocturnus' soundtrack for him. So yeah, one of his hands has got Zing, but I don't remember which one. I'm going to try the right claw. But yeah, you've got to kill all of them. He's really too dark. I don't know if the fight ends once you kill his head. Maybe his hands survive and might resurrect his head, but I don't know. We'll do a bit of experiment with this one, I reckon. Okay, about 100. 170. His right hand just not attacking. Does he attack? I was say, does he get three attacks from the start if he's got three? Oh, yep, there you go, left hand. So he's got three attacks from the start, Mortimer. Didn't do much there. Or his hand's weak to a different <laughs> element. Oh. Right, uh, yeah, I reckon John's fast enough to heal himself. Bring. Oh, we'll do another greedy. Let's hope he. Oh, he's fast. They're all fast. Oh, lovely block. Alright, lovely. Got the healing. He must be pretty fast then. I know the fastest to join Nocturnus and Zoma. He must be up there though. I mean, I labelled it as annoying. I'm quite enjoying this fight, to be honest. The variety in what his hands do. Okay, the right claw is defeated. So, I'm going to hope it is... Um, the right claw that had Zing. Because I know it's definitely one of them. I've not done this boss since, like, ten years ago when I first did the game. Oh, he's got a roar. Or is that a dam- oh, okay, that's a damaging roar. So that's less annoying than the one that stops you hitting. Right. Going for the hand first. I might have to do an experiment and see even if does if you just kill the head, is he then dead? You don't have to kill his hands. I don't know, I'll have to experiment. Um right, let's just attack with John and then coup de grass at Edward. Three hundred, nearly. That is a big hit. Same attack the Raptor has. Oh, I'm going to need a bigger heal than that. Okay, coup de grass. I'm going to use that actually because uh, I can probably take out Mortimer in one hit with that. That's full heal, Edward. And yeah, fuck it. It's just the attack with Edward. Oh, he's got a sleeper attack. Right, that's annoying. I wanted Jade to coup de grass, really. Okay, it claws down. Right, I need Jade back awake, and then should be able to take him out with a coup de grass. I mean, he's annoying in the sense that he takes a long time to do. But what I'm going to do with him, unlike the other legacy bosses, is just use the save editor, give myself, you know, more my level 25 and then 15. And just... Do... That's not the spell I wanted, was it? <laughs> I wanted Cockadoodle do. Oh well. So does he only attack once per turn now that his other bits are dead? I assume he does. Right, he's probably only got a couple of hits left. What spell do we want? Cockadoodle do, that's the one. We're running out of like, on no other legacy boss have we run out of our buffs <laughs> before the end of the fight. Assuming we haven't been disrupted. So this one just drags on a bit. Okay. Yeah, he's only got one attack by the looks of Alright, most for me. There's my force. Alright, force angry that you gone. So I'm gonna do both of those buffs again. Oh, 
I think he should die this turn, provided he hasn't got disruption wave. Disruptive wave. Yeah, he's only getting one attack. So it looks like each of his uh, head and hands only has one attack each. There we go, we got him. I'm not going to do him again because I can't be bothered. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it's a fun fight. It's just very long. So like normally we get him in three or four turns. He took us eight turns at level one there. So a bit annoying. But there you go. There is boss number eight, Mortimer. Final boss of Dragon Quest six. Surely it must be here. Yes, there we go. <laughs> it took me so long to find that one. I was flying all over the place. I was checking most of it up over first. Here we are. We are against Malroth. Now the fifth hardest legacy boss, apparently, according to my eye source. So he is final boss of Dragon Quest 2, so he's one of the OGs, and that's all he's got to say. <laughs> he caught me off guard. I wasn't ready with the music. There we go. Right. Let's see what he can do. Because I don't remember ever having much trouble with him back in the day. Obviously weak to. He is weak to Thunder. Right, Gale Force. But yeah, he was never one of my favourites either. Because the soundtrack is kind of meh. Yeah. But let's see what he can do. I remember his critical hits being big. That's about it. That was buffed. Cold breath. Okay, that did quite a lot. Right, so he looks like he's a breath attack boss. And they both did 100, 150. It's got relatively low defense though, we hit quite hard there. Right, we might need a couple of multi heals. No, we do a great D. This is still only level 1. But his breath attacks hit quite a lot. That's going to cause some real damage at the later levels. Yeah, another breath attack. Okay, his normal attacks are kind of mid-ranging damage. Not too hard, not too little. His defense is shockingly low though. Right, he's enraged on me. I'm not going to bother with that coup de grace because I think we can kill him next turn anyway. I'm going to do two multi heals in one turn. Oh, you only attack once there, that's alright. There we go, we got him. Alright, this one we can do a cheeky speed kill off. So he died in three turns, so his defense or HP isn't that high then. So he's not as bad as whoever we struggled with previously. Mightenhall boots. What a spectacular end. We'll see if these boots are any good. I doubt they are. Just hope they've got the evasion chance. Nah. They look right though. There's so many like different opportunities for cosplay in this game. <laughs> yeah, I do want to dress up as the characters from 8 when we finally do um, level 99 Dual Makers and Raptor. Another illiterate boss. Yeah, I've never played Dragon Quest or Dragon Warrior 2. Yeah. <laughs> Bit out of my... Not in my day. Or era. I think a lot of the earlier games do have remakes, but they're not like they're not exactly put in a modern 3D world remix. They're just kind of brushed up a bit from their like the SNES copies, or whatever the console was back in those days. I think the first Dragon Warrior game was 1986. Whatever console was around then. <laughs> There we go, we got him. So yeah, not too difficult overall as of yet. Obviously, we're still only at level one, but he is, well, he is supposedly the fifth hardest boss. He's the final boss of Dragon Quest II, Malroth. Ah, oh, it's got to be round here then. Must be, must be, 100%. There's the path. And then up here. Right, 100%, that has to be it. Yes, there we go. Right, we've found it at last. 
Zoma's map, level one. Final boss of Dragon Quest three in the same game as uh, Baramos, the easiest of them. But Zoma is the supposedly the fourth hardest legacy boss in the whole game. And there he is. This, I remember, has been one of my favourite legacy bosses from back in the day because of the soundtrack. She has the same soundtrack with Klasmos now from Dragon Quest XI. Come forward then and die in peace. Yes! <laughs> What's he weak to? Weak to the lights. I remember him having very like unique attack sounds. It's quick. Yes, that's the sound I wanted. Mm. So much nostalgia in this. I must have. I think this is one of the bosses I grinded to level 99. But it might be if I can dig up like my old channel. It might be one of the like my first ever YouTube videos from like 10 years ago when I had like a camera held on a mount holding above the DS. <laughs> Back when filming was difficult times and there were no such thing as screen recorders. Okay, his defense isn't that high then, but he's got the joint highest agility together with Nocturnus. He's gonna outpace us every time, isn't he? And he's got disruptive wave already, that's annoying. I fucking love this tune. There are so many, like, very just Fucking brilliant final boss themes from Dragon Quest. His core is amazing, Ratthorn is amazing, Zoma slash Kalasmos is amazing. The Dragon Lord from Dragon Quest 1 as well, his tune is like... It's not as explosive and energetic as this one, but it's like... I don't know, we'll, we'll get onto that in the next... <laughs> when we do Dragon Lord next, but it's fucking good. And Nocturnus is like the creepiest, most evil final boss theme ever. We've outpaced him this time, it's not bad. Lovely block. I'm sure he does have a critical... Yeah, I definitely remember him having a critical attack as well. I don't know if he's got that level 1. I'm gonna have to go back and learn. I think Dragon Quest 1 and 3 are linked somehow. But I've never played them. So I think that's kind of referenced in 11. Oof, that hurt. I don't know if I'll ever play those games, but I'll go back and like look at them. Look at the theme and story or whatever. Alright, there we go. <laughs> like four full turns of just straight up attacking it took us to kill him. He's got a decent amount of health. There we go, level two, we'll do a cheeky speed run. Yeah, it's this trounce this the soundtrack that makes the boss just fucking good. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy grinding on every single one. Not grinding on, Jesus. I'm going to enjoy grinding every single one of these legacy bosses up. Save for a few. Because they've all got their own unique animations and sounds and soundtracks. But I love what they did in Dragon Quest VIII with the 3DS remake in that they added all the bosses in the end of the dungeon. But I wish they had their own unique themes. Because they've got Estark at the bottom of that place. But he doesn't have his own unique theme. He just copies Dormagus' theme. It's just a bit annoying. But in 9, they've all got their own soundtracks. The spell. The spell didn't do very much though. That is it. When he gets 3 attacks per turn, that's really going to hurt quickly. Because he's doing a hell of a lot of damage in those 2 turns. Just firing on the hill, why not? We're going to need some more MP buffs so we can come and do these properly. There we go, we got him. Okay, so that was... I can definitely see that like getting very difficult very quickly, that one. So, there we go. There was Zoma. Final boss of Dragon Quest 3 and fourth hardest legacy boss in Dragon Quest 9. Right, now we are in the big leagues. The top three, and ranked as the third hardest, is Dragon Lord. So, I have had to um, grind him up to level 26 already to get Sorrow's map. So it's not exactly a perfectly fair test, but let's have a go. This theme. Like, it has the vibe of just a normally 
like sort of very old final boss theme, but it's it's got something to it. It's got like an element of that dark creepiness that some of the other tracks had as well. It's sort of slow but evil at the same time. Easily one of my favourites again. I mean, they're all my favourites at this stage. Right, let's see what he does. 250 base attack. Yeah, he's got John in one turn. Shit. I think what makes him like tough in the higher levels is just that he's non-stop attack. Like, he never wastes a turn in doing anything silly. Unlike some of the others. Let's try and bring a, a John back. Oh, he's gone first. Been outpaced. That hurts as well, that attack. I think that's one where your position actually makes a difference, because it hits your first member for uh, more than the others, and it goes sequentially downwards. Oh, I think we have another go at trying to get John back. Have we got any... Can we cheat with a leaf? No, I haven't got any leaves. I'm going to have to do an Omni Hill, regardless if this works. No, I'm needing Omni Hill next turn anyway. Shit. That might kill Jade. I hope she's alive. Alright, hopefully we go first and get that on the here then. We're going to be in big trouble if we don't. She's not going to survive even if she uses Defending Champion, so might as well just have her use the Coup de Grasse. Lovely. We're safe. Shit! Okay, both our healers are out. We need to win this turn. Okay, I didn't have this much trouble with Dragon Lord when I was getting him up to this level, but we've lost both our healers in this one already. So if he doesn't die this turn, or if he kills Jade before she attacks, then we're screwed. Uh, I might use Whipping Boy to defend Jade and have her get the attack on, because she'll finish him off. Where is it? I've got it here somewhere. Whipping Boy, there we go. Alright, let's defend Jade. Let's have a do it with style. Blind man's biff. Always. Okay. Alright, I'm gone. <laughs> Come on. Clutch! Yeah! <laughs> Love that finish. <laughs> right, we'll give him another go. Hopefully we do it a bit more sensibly next time, because that was a bit death-defying, that one. Alright, he's up at level 27. Alright, I'm going <laughs> to need to go back and do some revivals. I don't know what it is about this... Not purification, resurrection. I don't know what it is about this soundtrack. It's just... It's sort of like... like all of the others are energetic and just sort of... Ah, scary boss. But this one is just kind of... It, it's a slow burner. It's like a slow... Slow dawning sensation that you are completely screwed. There are so many words that music contains that my mouth just can't handle. <laughs> I can't explain why I like it. I just don't. Oh, we need a bank. Jesus. I did lose a bit of that money because my computer crashed after um, Zoma. Oh, we're up to 300,000. Like, all that's going to be used for is Chrono Crystals, really. So we can buy six of them. We need to start making some A-gates as well. Right, I think that needs a refresh... Right, let's see if it, he completely wrecks us again this time. Let's see what he can do. Oh god. Okay, yeah, I can see him getting stupidly hard already. I don't, I don't think I ever got him to level 99 in my first playthrough. That might be wrong. We need an Omni Hill. Did he kill us off before we got the buffs in? Alright, let's try and get a quick Omni Hill. Oh, great day. Love it. Oh, lovely dodge. Right, I need to get that shield ability. It's the one that 100% blocks critical hits. You can only get it on one party member, but I need it. Ouch. 
Okay, we got him. Lovely. And that was only oh, four turns. So, <laughs> a little bit more straightforward that time. But yeah, I can definitely see him getting stupidly hard towards the end. I can see why he's ranked third toughest. But there we go. Final boss of the original Dragon Quest 1. Or Dragon Warrior 1, as it was back in this day. In those days. And third hardest boss in Dragon Quest 9. Dragon Lord. Nice to have this lovely peaceful music just before you go and do something horrendously difficult. Okay, right. Ambiance. We must pause this soundtrack. And we are up against Estark, who is the post-game boss in Dragon Quest... I'm going to have to look at my spreadsheet because I can't remember. It might be Dragon Quest 4. Yeah, he's like after the final boss, basically. And he is... Yeah, a post-game boss in Dragon Quest 4. I think he's a different colour in different games. I think, I'm sure I remember him being blue somewhere. Maybe he was blue in the original game. I don't know why they couldn't make him that colour in this game. But in Dragon Quest 80 is this colour as well, but I don't know. But here we go, Estark, regarded as the second most difficult a grotto boss. I can't remember. I think it's his high attack that makes him difficult. Uh, he is weak to dark. I don't think he's all that fast. I think he's got high attack and defense, if I remember correctly. Right, he's not... Well, that's annoying. <laughs> okay, he's not done anything damaging yet. He's just been annoying. Let's see how much we do. Alright, that's not much, but we didn't have the force with us. That's, um... I love that bit. It's not one of my favourite soundtracks, but I do still quite like it, just for this bit. Alright, now we've got Force. He's obviously one that's got Disruptive Wave straight from level 1. Alright, kaboom. Not that much. And he's done that twice. I think... I don't know, maybe when he uses a spell that's kind of a godsend, because he doesn't do all that much. Even with, like, Kaboomal, I suppose. When he unlocks that. I think it's his normal attacks that are just killer. And he's got a critical attack as well. Let's get healing, and Edward's going to attack or not. That looks fucking scary. <laughs> you know, I've seen it on the screen, it still scared me a bit. But it only did 220 damage, to be fair. Maybe it's... Maybe his attack just goes up massively later on. He's enraged for Jade. He might die this time. No, not yet. There's the crit. Oh, beautiful block. That was lucky. Right, we're okay. Yeah, that crit is going to be a one-hit kill, regardless of who it hits. Even when he's level one, it's going to kill us all straight away. There we go. We got him. Alright, we're going to have to pause the soundtrack, because he's <laughs> that orchestral one goes straight into Sorrow's theme. Right, we'll give him another go, speed run. Alright, let's get that soundtrack back to the start. There we go. See what he drops. No, nothing yet. Yeah, I think a lot of these bosses drop the kind of gear that is like the main character wears in that game. So obviously Raptor and Dormagus will drop uh, Trodane stuff from Dragon Quest Eight. Maybe they'll drop some of Trode stuff as well. But if you want to do a bit of cosplay, I think this is where to go. Oh, he's got Kafrizzle from level one. That did two hundred damage. Does he use Kazamal? That rings a vague bell. I might be wrong. Um, right, let's have John defend. Because I can feel this going. He's got breath attack. Normal attack. He's taken a lot of damage already. Alright, he's enraged from me. But I'll do an Omni heal. Ouch. 
We got him. Lovely. So he can't have that much health then if I manage to dish him in three turns. I thought his defense was like quite a lot higher than the others, but there you go. So obviously he's only level one, so we're not going to struggle too much yet. But there you go. Second hardest <laughs> legacy boss in Dragon Quest Nine. We got Zenithium Gauntlets. And the post-game boss in Dragon Quest Four, Estark. Oh, we found it. Worm of Creek, that one. Right, and here it is. It all comes down to this. By far the hardest legacy boss of all of them. And the post-game boss in Dragon Quest VI it is Nocturnus. So I tried this in my um, sort of showcase video back in whenever ago that was. The one that got a stupid amount of views for God knows what reason. But I was level 99 and had so many stats buffed. Just, like, I cheated, basically. And I still couldn't beat him. He is ludicrously tough. I didn't grind him up at all. I just gave myself Nocturnus level 99 straight away. But, like, it's just it's stupid how tough he is. And his theme is fucking terrifying. Here we go. I mean, we should be fine because he's level 1. Let's see, I think he's weak to life force. Yep. Yeah, if he kills us at level 1, we're... Yeah, he's fast as well. Joint fastest with Zoma. Breath attack. He's got Kafrizzle at level 1 as well. 200 damage. I think to even, even at level 1, to outpace him, I would need loads of the different agility buffs from all the other vocations, which I haven't got yet. And that's at level 1. At level 99, you've, you've got no chance of outpacing him at all. Got relatively high defense as well. You can see in that animation, like, they're trying to get across that he is fast. Like, he recovers from being struck so quickly. Do a normal attack. I love the sound of his normal attack. Okay, he puts us to sleep as well. I forgot he did that. This is one of the soundtrack as well. It's got a really creepy slow bit in the middle. Right, do I waste a turn trying to wake me up? I think I do. So let's see what Cockadoodle do with Edward. He still hasn't done a normal attack yet. That's the bit I wanted to I wanted to see him do. It's this bit. It's fucking creepy. <laughs> We outpaced him that time, it's not bad. Still no normal attack, come on! I love the sound of it when he does it. Alright, that's three turns. Got buff as well, that's annoying. Right, he should die here. Should, there we go. <laughs> I was worried it just <laughs> completely annoyed. Was that five turns? It took, he ate four full turns of just straight attacks. We didn't even get disrupted at any point. Yeah, he's got by far the highest XP. That theme is terrifying. Right, let's give him another speed run. Heal up. I, th I think he's going to start destroying us at like level 10. Honestly. Oh, he's got oomph! Shit, right, I need to disrupt him immediately. I forgot he did that. Obviously, him oomph makes his normal attacks a one hit. One hit kill. Right, it's disrupting. And greedy. Um, yeah. Fuck. Right, I need to slow that down next turn because I want to hear those attacks. Because He nearly one shot me with a normal attack at level 2. What the fuck is that? 
Alright, let's do a full heal and a multi heal. Alright, good thing we got the full heal in first. This is like 500 damage with a normal attack at level 2. Like every single one of his normal attacks at level 99 is going to be a one shot. Unless you block it or dodge it. Jesus. <laughs> Look at that! Did a falcon slash and a normal attack. And he'd only got two turns. If he had three turns and then he did a breath attack as the last one, he would have, like, banged me in one turn. Oh, Jesus. Alright, I'm going to do him one more, because... Oh, oh, I love him. <laughs> as much as he just completely destroys me. Like, I do fucking love him. I've never got him to level 99, ever. Legitimately, that is. Because I think when I did my first ever playthrough of this, I had an action replay. So I was cheating for all the best gear. And I think I got him up to level 80 odd before I just could not do him anymore. And yeah, we're doing this playthrough legitimately. <laughs> I got no idea how we're going to beat him at level 99. But that's the goal. That's the main goal of this playthrough. Beat Nocturnus level 99. I barely even care about the other legacy bosses. Jeez, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gone. Oh, he's buffed. <laughs> Doing no damage when he's buffed, so we need to disrupt him, but we need to revive me first. The multi. Okay, we've got me, but he's going to attack now, I think. Yep. Two dodges, nice. Okay, should survive that fine. Right, we're back in the game. <laughs> Struggling with level 3 Nocturnus now. <laughs> Right, um, yeah, let's force back up. I'm gonna do an on the hill. Good thing we blocked that first one. Lovely healing time. Two seven. Oh, he buffed, isn't he? Right, I'm gonna disrupt with John, and then heal up with Edward. Oh, love that sound. Asleep, it's on Jade. Right, that's a pain. Oh no, Cora of Angels will heal that. It's good timing again. Oh, he disrupted him. Why is he still taking barely any damage? Let's do the buffs again. Right, we should have him now. It's, it's like, we're not going to get him very high before he starts just completely destroying us consistently. Oh, now he's buffed again. <laughs> no damage. <laughs> Alright, we got him. Honestly, he's... Seven turns it took us for level three not turners. Jeez, man. Honestly, I'm going to love grinding him up because he is an epic boss with just the... Like, this slow, creepy bit of the soundtrack is just, like... It's terrifying. Like, it doesn't need to be energetic to be, like, scary. But but anyway, there you go. There's all 13 Legacy Bosses done roughly in order. These are now red again because my PC crashed halfway through the recording. But, yeah, there you go. For Mortimer's the only one I'm not going to grind up all the way because he's too annoying, too slow. But the others, I am going to love levelling these up because they're the fact that Square Enix put in the, like, proper soundtracks for each one. I know I'm just playing it all of iTunes anyway. But the fact they did that makes this more just so much more epic. And I reckon there must have been so many people that have done all of these level 99. Like all 1,300 kills of in total of all these bosses. Because it's just such a fun mechanic. All of the bosses have got different mechanics. They've all got different soundtracks. All different like animations. Like we saw all Godemia, like squiggling around like a snake. It's just epic. But yeah, in the next few episodes we're going to grind up some of these a bit more. Concentrate on some and while we do a bit of grottos getting the legendary gear and then leveling all that up with a gates of evolution as well so until then thank you very much thank you very much for watching see you in the next one peace